at our nursery we have a lot of starter plants and by starter plants I mean plants that have been grown quite strong and you can use them for making into bonsai. I've always told people that bonsai need not be expensive. I don't know why people get the impression that all bonsai is expensive. There are expensive bonsai, some very very expensive bonsai, but a lot of the fun in bonsai is from actually making it. So I've always encouraged people to buy from nurseries and garden centers or buy from us, we sell starter plants, and you can make your own bonsai very cheaply and you would get a lot of enjoyment from doing it. So I'm not doing myself any favors because I'm asking you to buy from other nurseries and other people, but we sell them as well. My purpose in life through YouTube is just give you the knowledge for free. Now, we recently started stocking these pines. Now, for those of you who know your pines, if you come close, you will see that this is what we call a mugo pine. How do you tell a mugo pine from other pines? A mugo pine is a two needle pine. And for those of you who do not know the difference between two needle and five needle, why are they called two needle pines? Because every needle is in bunches of two. So mugo is a two needle pine. Not only that, a mugo has this waxy covering on the tips of the buds. These are called the um, candles for next year. And they're always covered with that waxy coating. So mugo pines are like this. So these are mugos. They're about two going on three years, maybe a little more. And what can you do with it? I will show you what you can do with it. I've always said there's no such thing as impossible material. Now these are the Scots pines. These are again like maybe two going on three year old uh, seedlings. Ugly, aren't they? So ugly. What can you do with that? All right, I can show you what you can do with it. Okay, let's start with a fairly simple one. I'm going to show you what you can do with these almost impossible pines. So with this Scots pine, now talking of Scots pine and Mugo pine, if you come close, you will see the difference. The Scots pines, the tips of the candles are not coated with a waxy substance. The Mugos are always covered with that waxy substance. And the Scots pine again is a two needle pine. If you pull each needle off, they are found in in pairs you know each bunch of needles let's pull one and you will see they come in twos like this one you see it's two needles so that's what we call a two needle point right let's work on this one so look at that beautiful white mycelium i don't tire of telling people what mycelium is because so many people think that it is a fungus or a disease but no, pines and beech trees have this wonderful substance called mycorrhiza or mycelium, which is a beneficial fungus. So the beneficial fungus in turn feeds the roots and feeds the trees. And of course, it helps the trees and it hosts on the trees. So it is a uh, symbiotic, sim relation. symbiotic, absolutely right, symbiotic. One helps the other. So mycelium is this white surface, and it's a sign of good pines. If I open this pot, this is a mugo pine, I should be able to find mycelium. I haven't cheated, I haven't looked. Look at the mycelium on that. Full of mycelium, beautiful stuff. Okay, I'm now going to just see what is below till I come to the root. And with most of these trees, the famous proverbial S shape, is the best shape you can make with these trees. So let me find the right grade of wire. I hate using new wire. I have such a lot of recycled wire lying around. I hate waste. So let's use some old wire. Now, you've got to judge what gauge of wire will work with what type of tree. So this trunk is in old money about quarter inch and I'm using, this is three and a half mil wire because I want to bend it quite severely. So to do that, I need a fairly thick piece of wire. Again, judging the thickness of wire comes with experience. I keep repeating these things. There's no magic formula because different species have different flexibility, pliability. 
and the age of the tree also plays a part so there's no one size fits all you just got to play it by ear use common sense everyone has common sense my colleague is laughing <laughs> <It's> <laughs> famous <true>. last words <laughs> okay i put that wire on okay now let's do the magic trick stir the pot it may look like sleight of hand but this is what we do in fact i will keep that option in case i want to make it a sweeping branch i'm now just going to put it in one of these temporary japanese training pots just to position the tree and then i will wire the branches wire is such a wonderful thing without wire you can't really do much with bonsai i pity what the older bonsai creators used to do before wire was invented or used for bonsai it must have been very hard cut and grow you got to wait whole growing season before you can cut again but with wire you get instant bonsai many of these trees I reckon these are what we call like a three minute trees if I didn't talk I would be able to do this in three minutes I always teach people to literally wire everything in sight don't bother about the shape or anything at this stage of the creation of your bonsai if you wire every single branch and then arrange the branches in the way you think would fit the design you will end up with a fairly credible bonsai i'm not removing the needles from these uh, branches because they're only one year needles some people remove all the needles and just leave a little tuft at the end i leave the needles to drop off in the following year the structure is the most important thing at this stage you notice i haven't cut anything at all yet i've just wired the tree okay now i'll cut again although i sell a lot of bonsai tools i'm not using any bonsai tool i'm just using the humble secateurs felco secateurs number 2 now let's see what we can get out of this there you are three pieces of wire so far let's cut this up this is too low and shorten this that top leader has become a long trailing branch if i wanted to make it a cascade in time i can make it a cascade going on that way but i don't think i will by cutting the tips off you're going to encourage budding it will bud and you will get more shoots now how is that that didn't even take three minutes if i didn't talk and i can put it in a little small bonsai pot and you'll get a very credible bonsai so that is that one done okay let's move to this one you must be saying now oh, that's a challenge <laughs> he's going to end up doing nothing with this let's see what we can do nothing is impossible okay these are the old needles which have gone brown so they are ready to come off again these are i think 2 year old going on 3 year old scots pine seedlings so again look at all that mycelium look at that beautiful mycelium by the way i'm not going to throw this mycelium away i'm going to mix it with the compost because it is like using um yeast when you make bread that mycelium will multiply in the soil so when you pot pines you can put some of this mycelium in the soil and it will benefit the plant that you're potting it in now let's again wire this trunk and see what shape emerges if i was going to grow this tree on i would keep all these low branches just to thicken the trunk so the concept of the sacrificial branch uh you should learn because 
the sacrificial helps to thicken the trunk much faster than if you didn't use any branches at the bottom. But let's see how this design goes. I may take it off because it may spoil the design at this point in time. But if you were looking to the very long term, then I would keep those branches to thicken the trunk. Okay, so let's just give the trunk a shape. You notice that I'm not taking the wire right to the top because there's a change in thickness of the trunk. So this one is thicker than this bit. So I wouldn't have needed to use a thick wire to go all the way to the top. I will use another piece of wire to do those branches at the top. So let's terminate this. You notice that I always use this gin pliers. It's such a useful tool for handling wire. So if I may just repeat, my most useful tools are the sec secateurs, gin pliers, little twig shears, the rake is useful, and sometimes I use the branch cutter. So these are the essential bonsai tools. Okay, now that you've put the wire on, I always teach people about stirring the pot. The concept of stirring the pot, this sort of action, this action is what you want. Go around. So one straight, ugly trunk becomes a more compact looking tree. Now, I thought I would use this as a sacrificial, I could use this as an actual branch. So there you go. Let's see what we can do with that one. Now this is a long branch at the base and I have nothing to anchor so Peter Chan is breaking his rule. He's not using the two branch principle but I'm anchoring the wire into the soil like I would wire the tr trunk and then I would take it off to the branch. So that is acceptable. Remember the two branch principle is only a method for anchoring. Once you get an anchor it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you can get the anchor. Now that long branch may be a bit too long, but do I cut it here? No, I shouldn't cut it here because if you cut it here, no, there's no green to pull the sap, that branch will die. So if you want to trim it, you need to leave some green. So I can cut it there, I can cut it there because still some green, but if I cut it here, that branch will die. So always remember that, you need what we call sap pullers to pull the sap through. Now these two I will wire again. I will remove the minimum, uh, amount of branches because I want to use virtually everything. So again, here now I have very conveniently found two branches. So these two branches can be wired with one piece of wire. Many people ask me, do you wire the branches clockwise or anti-clockwise? And my answer is, it doesn't matter. Now I've just done this bit clockwise. And I've done the main trunk anti-clockwise. Whatever is convenient, that's all that matters. There are no hard and fast rules. I've often wondered whether left-handed people do it one way and right-handed people do it another way, but I frankly think that there is no difference. Now again, there's a very long branch here. I can cut it here to shorten it and it will bud back. But I'm always leaving a bit of green. Okay, now let's keep wiring literally everything. If you just wire everything, you can't go wrong. All pines, especially the Scots pine, thicken very quickly. So by this time next year, this tree will be at least twice the thickness in the trunk. 
and because they thicken quickly the wire does bite if you want to leave the wire on permanently you can but usually branches we remove the wire in case it bites too much but you can leave the wire inside the trunk okay i've done that i haven't cut any branches yet let's see what the next one is let's have to change the grid i was using one and a half i'm now going to use a bit of two so these two there i will pull all these needles off because i have enough at the end so i'm going to wire these two so always remember two branch principle if i have ever taught you anything useful it is the two branch principle So I'm going to continue the session. So that tall thing has just gone to the top like that. Now I can even wire these. I still haven't removed any branches. I might just wire two of them because I don't need too many. Remember if you have too many branches at one point, like this is like a cartwheel, it will cause swelling and cause inverse taper. So in fact, if I'm honest, I should take it off because I will get inverse taper. The three branches there is more than sufficient. So there you are. Again, another almost like a three minute tree. I can cut this off if I wanted to. That's coming from inside the bend. It doesn't matter, you know. And I don't always just leave the top going like that. If you bring it down, you get a nice crown effect. That means it won't look like a feather sticking out of your head, like Hiawatha's feather headdress. So there you are. And if you pot it and grow it on, it will branch more. And next day you will get a very credible bonsai. So these were the two lanky Scots pines that we started off with. So they were not impossible. Now these are the mugo pines I'm going to work on. Most of you might think that this is one plant. I think it could be, let's see, we don't know. So let's deal with this. I have one which I have already pulled out of the pot. And if you had this plant, what could you do? There are so many things you could do. Let's start from scratch in case you think I'm cheating. Again, lovely pot with all that mycelium. I always take away some soil from around the trunk, not from the whole root ball, just from around the trunk. And I want to see what the trunk looks like. Because there are so many like branches coming out from one point, it is such an interesting tree, but a lot of people when will get confused. They don't know what to do with it. But because it is so full of trunks there are lots of options if you just had one trunk like in the pine you're stuck with it you've got no other choice but to just wire that trunk but because you have so many trunks let's see what we can do so for a start if we were to just wire everything in sight leaving it like that we'd get a very nice comp style let me just do that for you i will just show you what Okay. Although they are all going together like this, they do need some wiring to just define the shape a little more. By the way, the mugo pines, these wild mugos, I have seen some in Italy and in the Alps, and they are such magnificent trees with huge twisty curly trunks they have this habit of twisting and turning and they grow to a ripe old age easily a couple of hundred years for some of these pines in the mountains is nothing 
Now let's do something very simple. I'm going to make like a clump style with this because they're grown in a clump. Now, those of you who are more uh, clever or smart will have figured out, is it one tree or several trees? This goes through my mind right at the very start. And we will find out in a minute. I'm not jumping to conclusions straight away because I know that mugo pines have this habit of growing in a clump. So I don't want to assume that it is a clump of several trees. It could be one tree. So I'm just wiring all the trunks and then parting it a little bit to give space. I can see here one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine separate trunks. There are nine trunks in there. Nine trunks. So if you wanted to make a clump style, this would be perfect. I will pot them all up so that you can see the finished article. There are many different varieties and species within the mugo pine. It's not just a single species. This wild one is called mugo mugus. And then there is mugo mops, which is with a more definite trunk. And we have one creeping mugo pine on the nursery, which is a hybrid. And that one is very interesting. I did do a demonstration how to prune a tree in the ground. You will see it in some of my old videos. And I showed how to work on that creeping mugo pine. I forget the exact name of that. Okay, after wiring this, I'm now going to find some bonsai pots and pot them up and then I will show you what they look like after potting up. Okay, this doesn't look anything because it's not in a pot, but I can assure you it will look a very nice clump style if you simply did that. Now, let me explore further. I've got so many of these. By the way, we sell these on the nursery. Now, this one I started teasing. And lo and behold, if you come close, I think these are all separate trees. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lucky eight. Chinese love the eight. And uh, so, I think what has been done, just eight seeds were put in a pot and then they were allowed to germinate together to form this clump. I've often done this with maples as well. They make beautiful clumps if you just do that. Now, if you want it to be parsimonious, that means stingy, you can separate all these trees. Take it out carefully without killing it. I think they're so entangled. I may have to cut one or two. But I'm trying to get as much root out as possible. I'm just inquisitive. I want to prove a point. I want to see if it is, in fact, separate trees. So I'm going to tease away. I don't want to take up valuable video time. I'm just going to tease away. 
and see if I can separate them. But because they have been grown and sown together for so long, I, I'm convinced they're separate trees. Must have put eight seeds together to get these eight seedlings to sprout. And then we can use each of these trees to make separate bonsai. You may want to do that. I'm doing it just as a challenge. But some of you who want to just make it into a clump style, you can do that as well. So I'm just trying to prove the point that these are separate trees planted in this fashion. Usually seedlings, when they germinate, they are separated when they are one year old or a few months old. Sorry, not even one year old. Maybe when they're about three months old, you separate the seedlings and then you put them into individual pots. But in this case, these mugos are grown in this way so that they look bushy, but they are in fact separate plants. Now, the secret will be revealed. There you are, they are separate plants. They are absolutely separate plants. So I can separate all these eight plants. And then let's see, now we got to the stage of like that Scots pine. Let me just put a piece of wire and see what happens. As I say, wire is a wonderful thing. Without wire, how can you create bonsai? You can't. And if you snip the growing tips, you will get bud back. So you will get a very bushy plant with lots of branches. Now this one, I can just do a little more. So these are such simple projects that you can all do. There's no excuse for not doing it. Now that doesn't look anything, but give it a twist. And it should look more interesting. I will pot these up. When they're potted up, you'll see a big difference. Okay, so that's just one. I'm going to pot and wire some more. And I'm going to wire them all up. And when they're wired, you will see what delightful little trees these can turn out to be. Why is bonsai so fascinating? It's fascinating because you use your imagination and you use your creative, creative talent and the rest will take care of itself. And of course it's not expensive. It's That's that one. I'll just put another piece of wire there. So if you bought one of these starters, can you imagine? You will have eight or ten trees to play around with, not just one. And that is excellent value. There you are. That's a classic informal upright pine. And there are six more to do. So you'll have eight little bonsai. Okay, I'm now going to put them up. I don't want to bore you with it, but I'll put them up. I'm now going to show you the entire process, which means potting these little trees up. This is only a little plastic bonsai pot. We sell a lot of these, especially for young trees in training. They are ideal. Now, when you come to potting, even potting, there's an art to it. If you put it too far to that side, it doesn't look right. So it has to be more to this side. So the position in the pot is always important. It might seem obvious to those who are more experienced, but for those who are less experienced, every little tip helps. And the angle of planting always uh, makes a difference. 
I always tie the tree in just for safety. You don't have to, but always safer to do that. to this side and you can dress this tree up with moss so that one is done now this one is that bigger one where we literally took nothing off and again this is a plastic ground training pot these are not just flower pots, they're proper bonsai training pots. And again, I can put it in. Again, the planting angle makes a difference. So you plant this one like that. It's almost like a semi cascade. I haven't got any soil to fill it up, but that is what that one looks like. Now when it comes to those mugos that I separated, remember there are still one, two, three, four, six. I can separate them all if I wanted to. So when you're buying these little pots, remember you're going to get eight to ten plants. What excellent value. If you bought these seeds which some people are selling, They'll sell you five, five seeds for 10 pounds. So it's better to buy these small plants for that. Look at it, there's two trees there. So they're all potential bonsai and they're all well branched. So you'll get 10 trees from just one pot, eight to 10 trees. Now this one I decided to put in a proper ceramic pot. Unfortunately, that pot is more expensive than the entire bunch of trees. But then, that's what you pray for. But as I say, you don't have to use good ceramic pots. It's just that I wanted to show you the range of pots that you can use. And you see, I'm using the old soil, the original soil from the flower pot from which I took the trees out. The soil is perfectly fine. I didn't want to leave the roots bare. Okay, so that is the first shaping. As the tree grows, you can shape it some more. So that is the size of pot you would use for that tree. Some of these little excess roots you can cut off. So that's what that looks like. Now what about that clump? Ah, that's the other one. The other one I've already done. So I've used a bigger pot. So I've used a bigger pot for that one and this one for this one. So this is what you can get when you split all these up from that. So you can make eight to ten trees from that. Now, how about this? This was a lovely clump. If you didn't want to separate it, I still think it looks very nice. And I could put it in that pot. Now, when you get congested roots like this, you may have seen me do it before. I've been doing this for 40 years. Everyone laughs at me, but I have the last laugh. I call it cutting cake. Look at that. I've cut off that root. That's perfectly okay, perfectly okay. And now let me just tease a few more roots. The mugo and the scots pine are very, very tough trees, unlike the Japanese white pine, which is a very tricky tree to grow in Europe. I've always said that the white pine, a lot of people like them because they're exotic, but ever such difficult trees to handle. 
they don't like the European climate. It's too cold, too wet. So just putting them in a pot like that, that looks very nice as a clump. I will just show you, I came across a mugo. This is an old mugo that I did a year ago. It was a much older plant, same as these, exactly the same. You must be wondering why it's yellow, because the frost has got it. This is called the frost blush. And this was wired a year ago. And I'm sure if I took the wire off, it just shows how quickly they set. Look at it, it's already set in just one year. I'm not sure if I did it for a YouTube project, I could have done. The only trouble with a lot of these demonstration plants that I do, people come on the nursery asking, oh, where's that tree that you worked on? I want to buy it. And uh, I feel so, you know, rude if I say no I can't sell it to you that because I'm a kind person I relent and they buy it so you don't often see the end result of a lot of these projects I'm taking the wire off just to show you how quickly these pines can set and this I'm sure was no more than a year because the wire hasn't really bitten in it's starting to bite a little bit but there you are in just one year, this pine has completely set in position. The branches have set from wiring. So I would say by next year, these will all have set. They will all have set. This is Scots pine, that's a mugo pine. And that's a lovely clump style. So there's no excuse for not using material like this for making your bonsai. So I hope you enjoyed that little video today. So how could I not end this video by showing you some beautiful sites that are still on the nursery. Today is the 18th of December. Can you imagine? We are just one week from Christmas and I still have some maple leaves on a tree that I defoliated back in, I think it was September or early October. I defoliated this tree because it was scorched by the sun so I did a little experiment to see what would happen so it produced a huge new crop of leaves which were green until only about two weeks ago and only in the last week it started turning color and I thought I'd show you these most unusual leaf coloration look at it the center of the leaf is deep green and the outer edges is that beautiful pinky orange and that is a sight but on the same tree I have some other leaves which have got this blotching on it and even the blotching looks so beautiful. So nature is really wonderful when you see the variety of color and texture and this is what gives me endless enjoyment and pleasure from growing plants. So I thought I would show you this because it's something that you don't often come across. So this is a bleak winter's day. Grey skies, damp air, but it's not freezing cold. So we have something to be grateful about. But amidst all the gloom, we always can find something beautiful. And what could be more beautiful than this lovely accent planting, which is just going to go into dormancy these are the red ornamental strawberries and look at it one flower still struggling to bloom and the color of the foliage so on that note i will end this video and i hope to do more over the christmas holidays